Hi, and welcome back to my shop. I'm really getting down to the final steps for my live edge hall table here. In the last episode, I finished gluing up and fitting my hidden side drawers, and my carcass is now sanded and ready to take a finish. I do have a couple of additional steps before I can apply finish to the top, however. If you'll recall back to the first couple episodes, I still have a couple sharp edges that I need to clean up and kind of fare into the curve of the front. And I also found that I have a few little minor cracks where there are some pin knots on the top that I'll need to address. Once I get that taken care of, then I can apply the finish to the top and I'm pretty much ready to go. I'm now going to start applying uh, my finish to the carcass. And I'm going to use my standard formula or schedule for, uh, for cherry, and that's heated boiled linseed oil. So I've got my double boiler or my hot pot over here. I've got my oil heated up to roughly 120 degrees. And then I'm just going to start applying that. And I'm probably going to, I'll just keep applying coats of this um, until it really doesn't absorb any more oil. Sometimes that's just one or two coats, and sometimes it's four or five. This seems to be relatively thirsty cherry, so this might take a couple of uh, applications of boiled linseed oil. But I'm really eager to see this grain for the first time, because if you'll recall, I applied a veneer to all of the aprons, and it's quarter sawn cherry, which can have some really cool character to it. And hopefully I won't have any blotching. Uh, one of the reasons I sand to such high grits is to avoid any blotching in the cherry. So I skipped the process of applying any kind of blotch control or pre-treatment. So hopefully that will pay off. Well, the key to any really good finish is good surface prep. And although sanding is one of my least favorite things to do in the shop, it really does make a big difference in the final product. So I've sanded all the way up to 220 grit using my random orbit sander. Then I'm just going to do another pass at 220 with my hand sander just to make sure that uh, I get everything nice and smooth and leveled out. And at that point, I can start to think about um, softening some of these edges and then thinking about what I want to do on the ends as well as smoothing out some of these little sharper edges on the front of the piece. I'm just using my spoke shave to get rid of any of these sharp kind of right angles that got created when I used my track saw to get rid of the uh, the sharp points on the end. This will just kind of smooth things out and almost make it look like part of the natural edge. Now that I have all of my finish prep completed, all the surfaces are nice and sanded. I actually ended up going all the way up to 320 grits. So this is super smooth. Now I can start to apply my oil. Now we get the first look at what this board looks like with a coat of oil on it. And frankly, it's just stunning. You can see all that figure and all the swirl and all the different colors coming out in the grain, all the way from the sapwood to the heartwood. I'm really pleased with how this looks. And I also understand now why it was really difficult to work with because the grain changes directions a lot. Now that I have a couple of coats of oil on both the top as well as the carcass, I thought it would make a lot of sense to actually bring both pieces upstairs and put it in my hallway just to get an idea for what the combination might look like together and to see if there's anything I need to adjust. Overall, I'm really happy with how everything turned out, but after looking at this and living with this for a day or two, I've decided there's one thing I want to do to make a slight change, and that's really with the, the edge profile here. The way I left the edge, it was just completely squared off. And I talked about possibly even doing uh, a little bit of an under bevel there, like I typically would on, an, on a standard tabletop. But I don't think that's going to really look right with the kind of organic flow to the front of the piece. 
So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use a spoke shave to do a very similar profile to what we have in the front of the table right here. I'm not gonna make it, you know, wavy, but I, I might curve it a little bit and make it a little bit more organic than what you'd see if I just used a router bit and straightened that bevel off. So I'm gonna go down and play around a little bit with kind of sculpting those edges, and then I'll bring it back up and see how I like it. For this operation, I'm going to use my low angle spoke shave rather than my traditional Boggs Lee Nielsen shave. And the reason for that is purely that I'm gonna be really shaving into end grain here. So anytime you're going into end grain, you really wanna be using a low angle blade if you possibly can be. So I'll just kind of work my way, taking off more material toward the middle and then working my way out. And now I'll just use my random orbit sander to smooth that out. I've now let my boiled linseed oil cure for about a week. I'm not smelling any off-gassing anymore so that I know it's, it's pretty much all dry. And then my next step before I go, go any further is I'm gonna apply a wash coat of um, bullseye seal coat, which is essentially a one pound cut of shellac. I'm gonna apply that across the entire surface of the top as well as the bottom so I don't get in any unequal moisture absorption um, I want to make sure I keep this thing as flat as possible despite any seasonal changes. And that also, also will give me kind of a universal uh, barrier between anything I put on after this. That's a great characteristic of shellac is that it's compatible with any other kind of finish. So I'll get my seal coat on and then I'll show you how I'm going to fill the pores after that. I'm just using a brush to apply my seal coat. You could just as easily spray this, but it would take me longer to set up my spray gun and then clean it up than it will to just brush this out because it's a reasonably small piece. After letting the shellac dry, I gave it a good two hours um, and that should be plenty for me to be able to start sanding. I've got a little bit of 320 grit sandpaper here. And this is the reason that using that brush instead of spraying really won't make much of a difference in this process. I finished sanding now and I haven't wiped off all of the dust from the shellac yet because I wanted to, to leave it there to sort of highlight why it's important to fill the pores on an open grain species like walnut. So you can see in this example where all that dust has settled into those open pores and wherever you see white there, that's, that's open grain that we're gonna need to fill. Otherwise, if I get this to like a medium gloss finish after rubbing it out, you are, you're really gonna see those pores if they're not filled. Now, to fill all the pores, I'm gonna use a product I've used in a couple of projects in the past, um, Crystal Lac. I like it because it's a completely clear pore filler. So that means I can apply an oil finish like I did here, seal it off, and then fill those pores, and you won't have a difference in color variation between the pores and the rest of the wood where the, the filler has settled in. And I'm just gonna spread this on with a chip brush and it's gonna take quite a few coats. It's the one thing I found is that this is not like a, you know, a one or two coat process. It takes quite a few coats to, to really get the pores filled, depending on, again, how, how high you want your, your finish gloss to be. And I also found if you put too much on any one coat, when you go to trowel it off, it just makes an absolute mess because you have so much excess material at the end. And then I'll come back and trowel everything off. This is just a Bondo applicator. And 
Now that I've got all of my pores filled, I've got my sealer coat on, and I've got everything sanded back up to 400 grit, I'm ready to start applying my finish coat of shellac. So there are a couple of things I'm going to do to make that process as easy as possible. Because it's good and dry in my shop, I figure I'll be able to get my coats of shellac to dry pretty quickly. So I am going to spray on my top coats here. And I am going to go with shellac. Now I've got a two pound cut of shellac that I'm using here. So that's going to go on a little bit thicker than that wash coat that I used before. So I'll be able to build up a finish a lot more quickly. Secondly, in order to spray more easily, because this piece is sort of big and unwieldy, I'm just going to use a Lazy Susan. And this is actually, you can buy these at Rockler. You can buy ones specifically made for finished projects. But this is just something that used to be in my kitchen that we've sort of abandoned. So I've just put that on my assembly table, and then if I center my board, I can go ahead and spray the front, give it a 90 degree turn, step back, spray the end, spray the back, and then spray the other end. And then I can go hit the top. So that'll make it as easy as possible for me to access all parts of this top with the spray gun. I've now let my tabletop cure for about two weeks now. If you have the luxury of waiting, the longer the better before you rub out a finish. Now you really need to rub out any finish that comes off the gun or off the brush because you're going to still end up with little imperfections, little dust nibs here and there, uh, especially in a shop like mine. I mean, I don't have like a filtered dedicated spray booth. I'm going to try to start out with just some thousand grit sandpaper just to get rid of those little dust nibs and see if that's going to be sufficient. If not, I might back off to six or eight hundred grit. And then I'm going to go and use my standard schedule of pumice stone followed by rotten stone to really get a nice semi gloss finish off of this. I'm using just a little bit of mineral oil here, uh, not mineral spirits, uh, just as a light lubricant. So as I'm sanding, I'm not kicking up dust so much and I'm gliding across the surface. And then I'm also getting kind of down and looking at the surface with a raking light and I can really tell like there are a couple places where I have some just very light orange peel which is uh, not uncommon when you're coming off a spray gun. So I'm just making sure that any of those imperfections are worked out before I move on to the next grit. And now I'm moving on to my pumice stone. And I went into this process in pretty good detail with my writing desk project, which was also a walnut top. So you can check that out for a little more detail, but I'm just using, again, mineral oil. And then this is medium grit pumice stone, and I'll move on to fine grit. And then if I want to, I could even go up to some rotten stone if I want to get a real high gloss finish. I'm now just removing the last coat of oil and uh, fine pumice stone. And I'm going to get as much of the mineral oil off as I can. So then I can kind of step back and take a look at this and see if I need to go any further or if I'm happy with where the finish is right now. As I look down the board, I think I'm pretty happy with where the finish is right now. I think if I were to go too much further and give this an even higher gloss, it might, um, it might just not work with the rest of the piece because I don't have a, much of a gloss finish on the base at all. It's really just going to be an oil and wax finish. So I think this is where I'm going to stop. I'm really, really happy with the results. I really like how the grain is popping and you get kind of the the interesting colors that go from the middle of the board all the way out to the to the edges and then you have of course the live edges adding some character so i think i'm pretty good with the top now I have, all i have to do is attach it to the base and i have a couple other little things i need to clean up and i'm pretty much done
Well, here I am at the Furniture Project as part of the New England Home Show, and this is where I am ultimately exhibiting the hall table. Uh, this is the fourth day of the event, and I've gotten some really positive feedback on the piece. People tend to be you know, attracted to the walnut. They want to know what material it is and, and how I got the bark off, and they have lots of questions. So it's been a great event. Um, one thing I found is that I have to leave one of the drawers open because they are hidden drawers and people don't realize that it has the drawers in the end. So that's kind of the one thing I've had to sort of learn as I've gone through the show. But overall, I'm really happy with the end result. Haven't sold the piece yet, but there's still a couple hours left in the show.